Hiyo guys, this is Pighead10 and welcome to your third Lua tutorial, Roblox Lua, not normal Lua. And in this tutorial I promised you I would teach you about, oh, I'll tr first of all I'll try not to spin the camera around because I always just madly spin the camera around when I'm not doing anything, so I'll put my hands away from the keyboard. And so I will not move the camera around as much as I did before, I'll probably still do it, but I'll try not to. Anyway, in this first, um, not first, third tutorial, we'll be covering properties. Now, what are properties, you say? If, in Explorer, you click, if you have, if you don't have Explorer, click View um, Explorer. If, click on a part first, then look in the Properties window, which is also View Properties. Then, look in the Properties window. These are all properties. You can change every one of them. So, click on Part or the base plate you have in Workplace, whatever you named it. You can know how to name stuff. <coughs> Color C, brick colour. You click on that and click green. Look, the thing has changed to green. What a surprise. If you change transparency to zero, it's not transparent. Reflectant to one, it becomes fully reflectant. Change back to zero because it's annoying. If you change uh, anchored, what does anchored do? If you unanchor it, and wait for ages and I have a feeling it's all oh right it's welded to this not welded oh, I've got to turn manual joints on which means every part would have a weld in it which gets really annoying I'm just gonna move this up Oop, I locked it didn't I so I couldn't click on it accidentally which is kind of stupid so if I press play now the base plate will fall down because it is not anchored I'm just gonna anchor it I can't because I've locked it which is very stupid again uh, right, so how can I use this in a script, you wonder? I'll show you using the command line. Um, actually, let's not use the command line because you can't see it. And we had the script in our last tutorial. Um, you don't need it anymore. You can delete that. Uh, so I'm going to make it so you can actually see this one. I'm sure if you've looked at scripts or have been interested in scripting, you've seen people use game.work.workspace.parts, blah, blah, blah. You've seen all of that, and you know what it means. Game. Game is... Hang on, before I explain all of that, let me just show you how organisation things work. If you type game, actually I will explain game now. Game is, I think it's a data model, that uh, you don't need to know what that means yet. It's big. You know, that helps, of course, it's big. It groups everything together, so you look in Explore, Soundscape, Debris... Uh, Stars pack, Stars UI, lighting, players, part, camera, spawn, location, workspace. They're all in game. It's just one thing that groups everything together. If you put a dot, every time you put a dot, it moves down one to one of its children, which children is just a thing below. So if you press plus, a child of spawn, location is decal. If you press plus on here, a child of workspace, script, spawn, location, camera, or part. So game. What do you want to do? All the parts, everything is in workspace. You want to change something in workspace at the moment. If you get game, dot, and go straight into workspace. So this means it's now looking for something in workspace. If you put another dot, so now you need to tell what in workspace you want to get. Let's change something with the part. So this tells it, it is looking for the part. This is what it's going to do. If you put another dot, dots can mean children, or the um, property so if you want to change its transparency for example you can put part dot transparency that will access the transparency just put equals zero or equals whatever you want to transfer let's set our transparency to 0 0.6 what will that do press play and it changes the transparency to 0 0.6 as you can see So, hopefully I explained that clearly enough. If you put dots, it goes down one. So imagine it like a tree. D game groups everything together. Inside game is workspace. So game dot workspace, dot part, which is in workspace, and dot transparency, which is a property in part, and then set it to 0 0.6. Um, this is a data type, the number that we covered in the previous tutorial. But let's um, have a go at a property that isn't a number. So we wanted to change 
the part's position. So part, d not position. Let's change. Yes, let's make. Let's change its position. Actually, let's not work with base plate because, and we'll rename the base plate base. Let's not change the base plate because that will just move the base plate and make us all fall off if we try and test something later on. We'll just put a brick and call this one test. So, what else do I need to change now? There's no longer a part in workspace that it's now called. The brick we want to change is test, so game.workspace.test. Dot transparency equals 0 0.6. Now that will change your test transparency to 0 0.6 if you see. And I've noticed it's everything's loading, loading up quicker now. Oh, we've still got the winner is there. This is now, you can see in uh, properties that says 0 0.6 there. And when you press rewind, it says 0. If we change the transparency to 0 0.6 here, uh, I've already gone through that. Oh, let's skip that bit. I'm going to edit that bit out. Right now we want to change something that's not a number. We want to change. How about let's change the part test's name. No name. If you try doing this, if you want to name it to Pickhead Ten because every part's name should be Pickhead Ten because I am king. What do you want? To, what do you think happens? Well, if you listen carefully in the last tutorial, you can probably work it out from this error. The error says workspace or script line one second, which means the line the error is on line one as you can see from the line number one it says string expected what do you think that means we were saying in the last tutorial about strings it means that this needs to be a string and it's not if it doesn't have speech marks it's trying to refer to something previously we want speech marks if we put speech marks around pickhead 10 then it's now, that picker 10 is now, oh, we forgot to rewind. If we don't rewind, the next time you rewind, what you've just done will be lost. So make sure you do it. You put picker 10, put speech marks around picker 10, or whatever you called it. Press play, and if you look in Explorer, it is now picker 10. But you still can't see that in game, because that's really boring. What do you want to do? You want to change the size. That, well, what do you think size is? We haven't gone through all the data types. We've just gone through string and number, which are the two useful, really useful ones. But they're not. But you can't do them with size because size is three numbers. And if you played battleships, you say hit A B or whatever A one. You go as your teachers will tell you along the corridor up the stairs. This is these three coordinates are pretty much the same. It's X axes, I'm not sure which direction is which because I keep moving the camera. X, and let's just check from what, hang on, which way is X and which way is Y. So, Z is this way. So, plus Z. Z is, Z is forwards and backwards here. So, if I position it right, Z is, if I move this there to there. Actually, let's use these because these are easier. Z is this. This is the Z axis. That's the last one. So I don't know why I'm doing it first, but I am. It goes X, Y, Z. X is side to side. So this is X axis. The Y axis is up and down. And the Z axis is backwards and forwards. That's why it's three dimensional. Well, Battleships is on paper, there's only two. You can't go up and down. You can just go. Actually, no, you can't go forward and backwards because there isn't. It's just go up and down or side to side. So what do you think will happen? We want it to size. How big is you get the size at the moment? What's its size at the moment is 42.42. So if we change it to, let's make it massive. 100, 100, 100. We change the part size to 100, 100, 100. What do you think will happen? Will it increase to 100, 100, 100? No. Why do you not? Why do you think not? You won't know this. It says bad argument. Bad arg argument is a thing. That this is this is this is the argument. I don't know what it's not actually an argument. It just says that because output is stupid. It's not as clever as us humans. 
bad argument three to question mark, which means question mark means it doesn't know. It's a it's um it's a table that's not it's a table that's not there. I think. Yeah, it's trying to reference a table that's not there. You don't need to know all that yet. Vector three expected got number. As you saw, this is a number value, as is this, as is this, and it's just a number, comma, number, comma, number. That won't work because it just doesn't. It's not the right kind of value. These are three numbers, and size is a vector three. So to use a vector three, we have to put vector three dot new. Vector three is in every script's environment, which means you can use it in every single script. And all you need to do is put dot new, which is a function side vector three. Let's scroll that way so you can see it. Um, two brackets inside this bracket puts dimension. So the x axis, the y axis, and the z axis. Which will change it to 100, 100, 100. Oh, and forgot to rewind it again. That is stupid. And vector three dot new 100, 100, 100. What do you think will happen now? Play. And wow, we can't see it because it's gone so big. If you go inside a brick, you can't see it for some reason. Nothing to do with the graphics. Oh, I keep spinning around the camera again. I like doing that. I have no idea why. The brick has grown to 100, 100, 100. Which is good. In a, in a script, you can use that if you want to make, I don't know, someone's head grow big, you can set their head. Actually, you can't do that because you don't know what their name will be or what else. There's another thing I should also introduce to you in this tutorial is just quickly is the wait function. You probably have seen it, it's the most simple function. You can use it in every script. Wait. Wait with a number. Just wait the amount of seconds before doing the next thing. So if we set it to a size 100 and 100, 100, and then copy and paste that because I'm even lazier, and then change it to 50, 50, 50, what do you think will happen? It will change it to 100, 100, and 100, because it's and which is massive. And if we wait five seconds, it changes to 50, 50, 50, and it's not anchored, so it starts bouncing around. That's what wait does. You can use that for cool stuff. So if you want to make a very simple script that changes properties, then you can put loads of property stuff, just changing one after another after another. These, well, we we want to change uh, a different property. We want to change. How about, um, let's change the, ooh, what property should we change? We should change the, what, what properties are interesting, what, do something. We can change the, uh, there's no, shape. If we change the shape, shape is what we call an enum. It's, if we want, we just zoom in again so you can see. Game dot workspace and it's called test, so we use dot test, and then the property is shape, so we put dot oops dot shape. And how do you think we do this? It's an enum, so there I'm not I've never I don't usually use enums, so I'm not too sure on the official terms for all of these. But basically, you can use strings, but they're not the actual um number values you can use numbers i'm not exactly sure how this works because i never use them and i don't plan to use them much i'm not sure the official term so if i get some of this wrong don't blame me shape equals and put um it's not a string this is not a string it's an enum so let's what shape's going to put it it's is it ball or sphere ball so we change it to a ball shape oh well, i don't need a semicolon I'm just used to C++. Put ball in that. That is not a string. Remember, that's important. This is not a string. It's a, a enum. That's what it's called. I remembered finally. If we run, that will change shape into a ball. As you can see, it's magically morphed into a ball. And... So it's all it's all good. That can do something, but you'll find out what we can make of all of this in the next tutorial. But don't forget to subscribe. And until then, actually, I don't know what until then. Just do some stuff. Go watch silly dogs doing stuff on YouTube. I don't know. Keep practicing this. You might want to watch this tutorial several times, if in case you didn't understand it. But don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you in the next tutorial.